Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. So I've been working on these Jupyter Notebook things, and it's fascinating. I mean, it's just fascinating. There's so much stuff going on with them. However, there's a few tips and tricks that I'm discovering. Um, no one told me about some aspects of it. So I want to share just little bits and pieces with you guys that I've learned um, over the first, you know, this is just, I, I'm barely like a week and a half, two weeks in. Uh, to learning how these things work. So I don't have lots and lots of knowledge to share with you. I haven't spent days working on them. I've only been working on them very lightly. Um, but I've picked up a few tricks, so I'm going to pass them on. Let's take a look at what I'm doing. So what I've got open here is Azure Data Studio. I've got a couple of containers that I've been working on. Um, one is um, uh, going to become a presentation on containers, an introduction to containers. I'll be presenting that uh, for the first time at SQL Intersection in um, June, I believe. And then I've also got another one um, that I am documenting how to use Python to control Docker within Azure Data Studio as I figure out how to control Python from Docker within Azure Data Studio. Now, so the first, what we have here is one, two, three different code settings, uh, um, um, code, you know, code, code blocks, and then a text block. And so you can add and subtract. And I've already shown some of this. And when I did the first bare bones introduction, I showed you how these things worked. But let's drill down a little bit on some of the stuff that you can do with it. Now, once you've got this thing here, I can double click and start editing, sure. But that's not what I'm interested in at the moment. What I'm more interested in right now is, is let's run it. Now, here's one of the tricks I learned. We need to make sure that we've got the kernel set before we run it. See, you'll notice it says Python. Now, does that look like Python to anyone? No, that is absolutely T-SQL. So if we were going to run this, we would want to change to SQL before we tried to run it. And notice it even changes the syntax highlighting. So this is Python. We're going to run Python from up here. So let's go ahead and run it. And it ran, and it brought back the stuff I told it to do. And that's nice. I mean, so we've got all the information back. We can see what's going on, how things were set up. Um, one little funny bit is if you take a look here, I do have an exposed password that um, is my SA password, and I've got it exposed through the settings here. That might be a worry going forward. There's ways around that. We'll talk about that when we talk about containers. We're talking about Azure Data Studio, and, and uh, more specifically, we're talking about these notebook things. So... Once I've got results, I can clear my output. And so now I can rerun this thing over and over again. As long as I save it like this, I can pass it off to you, and you can run it locally, and you'll get different results than I will. Same thing goes down here. Now, you'll notice I've set up the Twitch variable up here and set it you know, to my containers, and then I did an attribute thing. But once I've run it, once I've established Twitch within the context that I'm running, I can continue running commands against it, and that's cool. So that's that's a neat little variable that we have um, that we can control. So it's even though there's more than one code block, the code blocks actually can communicate to each other to a degree. Um, I haven't tested to how much a degree that is. In fact, we're going to test it live here on the video. Because the next thing I want to show you is if we do want to execute the SQL, we've got to switch over to that kernel. And then once we switch to that kernel, we can run a query, except that we haven't selected a connection yet. Aha, let's select a connection. There we go, we're connected up. So you notice I've got a use command in here so make sure it goes to the right database because otherwise it's just going to go to the default. And so once we've got this, now we can run the query and we get the results back and it, you know, it's a query. So that's all cool. Let's clear the output and so we could rerun that. But now my question is, and is my syntax still valid here? If I switch back over to Python and I try to run my Python script, 
Ah, see, Twitch is not defined, so I would have to reconnect this stuff to run it. That's going to be fascinating for how I set these things up. So now you've seen one of the things that I'm learning live in the way this thing is working. So once I've done that, if we come back down to here and rerun it, it's going to run fine. So yeah, that's very fascinating. Cool. All right, well, let's look at some of the other things that I found out too. If we're looking at text fields, you want to edit it. Let's say we want to make this text field um, bold, right? So we're going to underline it at the beginning and underline it at the end. Oh, sorry, that's italics. Um, if we want to make it bold, it's two underlines and now it's bold. Or we can also use asterisks as long as, oops, I just showed you something I want, didn't want to show you just yet. We can also use asterisks as long as there's no space between them. That's italic, and if we add two, it's bold. Now, that was a lot of typing, very much a pain in the bottom. What if we just highlight the text that we're interested in, and let's make it bold. <gasps> Look at that. Yeah, you can actually highlight the text and put it in as you go. So that's really cool. It makes it, it, makes it a lot easier for editing. It will actually allow you to, to format the things as you're going along. It, it, it's smart enough to recognize that you're trying to wrap it. Um, now, if you're tr not trying to wrap it, if you're trying to, you know, replace something, that's not how it works inside this text editor because that's just not how it works inside this text editor. It works differently. It, it knows that it's a markdown text editor, so it's trying to attempt to help you. That's great news. So that's cool. Now, I have also discovered that there are not everything available in here. So what I've got is, if you look at this text, it looks really sloppy and messy. And if you look here, I've got code, but I've got actual Python code here, and I should see it now. So I'm double-clicking to open it up so I can go in and edit. Now, the markdown says that if you've got, you know, let's say this really long string, all you have to do is put in an arrow, and, a, and that should, an arrow and a space, that should convert it to an, uh, a quote, to indented. But it's not happening here, so they clearly haven't yet supported that. Now, if we try putting in spaces, again, it doesn't really do anything. It's, it's you know, it, it is attempting to help me out, but, but it's not, nothing's happening here that to really do the formatting. Um, also, you'll notice three ticks mark something off as code, and it will change the format. And in theory, we should be able to do three ticks and Python, and here, you'll see that it, it's showing it inside my editor. Yep, that's Python you're working with, buddy. But yet what's displayed out here is not. So there's not all of the things that should happen inside of these things is happening inside of these things. So it, it, you know, it gets interesting. I mean, a lot of them, um, for example, a star and a space gives you a bullet and you can do bullet lists from there. Also, you'll find that I'll frequently if you don't have um, carriage returns between some of the formats, then you won't see the formatting occur until the carriage return is put in there too. Um, I've had a hard time replicating that every time, so I'm not gonna demo it for you now. But these are all the little things that I've picked up as I've been working with uh, the containers so far. And so I'm just passing on a few little tips and tricks to you guys and even demoed one, you know, discovering one live in front of you. Um, so that we can see and understand how these things work ourselves over time and um, get more direct control over what's happening. All right, so don't go away. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Especially if this Jupyter Notebook stuff is helpful to you and these tips um, are helpful to you. I'm going to keep learning on these things. I'm going to keep figuring out more stuff, um, and I suspect very strongly, and I'm sure I'm right, Microsoft is going to introduce more functionality within this uh, um, you know, Azure Data Studio. So you guys are going to want to track this stuff over time and keep an eye on what's going on with it. Um, in the links down below, I've got where I am storing my Jupyter Notebook. So if you want to go in and see what I'm doing and, and play with it or, or tool around with it, you absolutely are encouraged. I'm going to share this information completely, and it's all out there on GitHub. So take a look at that. 
Help yourselves, take a look and see what's going on. Again, right now they're very, very basic because I'm just figuring it all out. But that's it. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.